Well, it's second best. That you're only there for the beer, David. It's a dirty great compromise. Here you are, sir. Two teas. Oh. Yeah. At the desk, please. Thank you. What are those you've put on the table? Two teas. Isn't that what you said? Th that's right. Yes, I asked for teas. Thank you. Just a minute, David. Could we have two cups of tea, please? In tea cups. Oh, heavenly host. In real cups. In proper cups. Those are real cups. Oh, Lord. Do you come from these parts? What's that got to do with it? Do you want these teas or don't you? I can't stand arguing all day. Baker like cups is all. Listen, I've driven 200 miles and I just want a cup of tea, all right? No. These people need telling. What's wrong with the blimmin' cups? They're not dirty. Are they made of china? Of course they aren't. Are they made of earthenware? No, no the bloody aren't. I'll get the manager. He'll sort you out. I'll spit in his eye. <sighs> We're very self-righteous today, aren't we? You watch your lip and put that cup down. <laughs> Don't drink out of it. <laughs> oh, I love you. Do you know that? Here he comes. Oh, dear. Yes, is there something wrong? When I ask for a cup of tea in the potteries, I expect to get it in a cup. Oh, and would you like uh, perhaps a silver side plate? A plain earthenware cup, that's all. Look, mister, will you tell your daughter... A simple so not earthenware cup. Plain, undecorated. Is that asking too much? I'll tell you what. I'll get one in especially for you, shall I? What would you like? Wedgwood? Spoon? What do you think this place was made of? Which place? Out there, all around you. What do you think it depends on? What, what gives all them people out there employment? What put all those roads and bridges and canals out there so your tatty little cafe can rake in a profit? What do you owe all that to? And when they're all using these unbreakable, these non-biodegradable bloody so-called cups, when the old world's flooded with them and all the pop banks shut down and there's no work and everybody's on the dole, who's going to drink out of your tenth-rate tatty imitation potted meat jars then, you stupid pillock? Let's have a look at you. How have you been keeping then, Me? Eh? Oh, <laughs> fine, terrific. Well, it's you we're worried about. You've lost weight, haven't you, eh? Yeah, never mind his weight. Look at his head, he's going bald. Sit down and I'll make a cup of tea. I'll make the tea, I'll make it. No, you won't. Sit down, the pair of you, I'll make the tea. I want to make the tea. I'm dying to make the tea. Pair off with you. Sit down, you fool. I won't sit down. I want to make my mother a cup of tea. Is a Fool, and it? Sit yourself down. I'll make it. No, I'll make it. Yeah, bloody fools. You'll have me as bad as you next. Oh. I didn't want him to make it, Ernie. He doesn't put enough tea in the pot. He's getting real mingy. Pours out like a stream of tap water, but you can't tell him that. He swears blind it's strong tea. He never was a very generous man. He never chucked his money about, but I think he's going a bit funny. How are you feeling? He started hiding his money. Five pound notes. I found this big pile of five pound notes on a shelf in the gold place. <laughs> They'd gone all damp. They were stuck together. You had to peel them off, Ernie. Over two hundred pounds. Now, what's this about your being poorly? Oh, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. What did the doctor say? Here we are. Tea up. <sighs> right. Uh, cup of tea, Ernie? Oh, after Mother. Uh, your Mother doesn't like first cup. No. She says it's too weak for her. If you ask me, she's losing her sense of taste. <laughs> oh, Edgar, you can't give Ernie that. It looks like a stream of tap water coming out. You see, her eyes are going as well. It's like black treacle, that is. Thanks. No, don't bother pouring one for me yet. Let it brew. Oh, please yourself. Have you seen the paper? That, uh, what's his name's dead? Oh. Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, well, it's in the paper. Garside, you said. Ah, Garside. What Garside's that, then? Oh, I'll be one of Jim Garside's brothers. I didn't know he had one. Well, he hasn't now. Oh, by the way, how's Uncle Horace? He isn't very well, Ernie. Still working? Oh, he hasn't worked for a year or two. Can't get upstairs, your Aunt Astor says. He hasn't got the breath. 80% dust. He gets about 30 quid a week for that. 5% me. 
Don't bit tuppence. Another five per cent and I'd get a tenner a week. Now, is that fair, Ernie? Your health and strength's worth all the icing on the Christmas cake. Uh, you can not pick it up in a pot bank like you can in pit. If I'd breathed a bit faster, I'd be picking up compo now. Thirty quid a week he's getting the Rob Dog. Rob Dog? <laughs> You're still on about that teapot? He's a Rob Dog. Robbed his own brother. What? That stupid teapot? Stupid? It was Wedgwood. It was made by Wedgwood himself with his own hands. Yes, but your brother, a teapot. I might slip up and see him. What, hard, Horace? <laughs> well, don't take any valuables with you. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's about time we got this over with. Eh? What's up with Mother? Why didn't she told you? Oh, I can't tell him, Edgar. How can I tell him? I can't tell him. Oh, look, for the love of God. I just couldn't look him in the eye and say it. I'll tell him, Edgar. He's got to be told. It's just that... Well, nothing like this has ever... Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, Dad, please. Well, tell me. Oh, my God. It... Well, it's not really up. A... Oh, I never thought it had come to this, Ernie. She's been your mother. She's... Your mother's been had up. Oh. Yeah. Bloody hell. Had up? She was caught shop... Shop... Lif oh. Shoplifting? Oh. Well, that's nothing. Nothing? What... What's the matter with you? Shoplifting? Well, I, I thought it was something serious. Ah, oh, we'll survive that. That's nothing. Nothing? Branded as thieves and you say it's nothing? That's funny talk for a schoolmaster. I thought she was dying. Ah, oh, this isn't the end of the world. It's the end of my bloody world. Oh, listen, Mum, it's nothing. People forget these things in no time. I won't forget, Ernie. How can I forget? The worst part's over already. Telling me. And I don't mind. Look, I don't mind. The roof hasn't fallen in. It'll be on your mind. Always. Oh, honestly, that's rubbish. Oh, no, you wouldn't be human if you forgot. Now, what happened? They're taking me to court. But you'll only be there for a few minutes. What happened? A pullover. A lifetime's character for a bloody pullover. She walked out of Braddock's without paying for it. Did you forget to pay? Oh, I... How could she pay? She hadn't got enough money on her. Did you realise what you were doing? Realise? She'd only hidden it under a coat. What made you do I it? I don't know, Ernie. I took it, that's all. Yes, but why? I just liked it. It was nice. Yes, but... I took it, Ernie. I took it. Isn't that enough? I'm not first and I won't be last. What more do you want me to say? And this is me Aunt Asta. Aunt Asta. David Solomon. How do you do? Well, pleased to meet you. Father, David Solomon, my senior tutor. Well, how do? Senior tutor, I. We thought... I thought David might stay with us for a couple of nights. Then he could drive me back to town. Oh, I... Well, I, I don't want to upset your arrangements. I, I could easily book into a hotel. David decided he'd have a look at potteries. He's never been here before. Doreen's always telling me what a, a dramatic landscape it is. Is that what she calls it? <laughs> You'll have to muck in. We're not posh, you know. David don't mind roughing it a bit. Do you let all your students call you by your first name? Oh, well, things change. Life rushes on. Don't mind Asta. She's as old-fashioned as Mo. Well, I think it's nice to have a bit of respect. Well, I'd better go up and make a bed for you, Mr Solomon. It'll have to be your dad's room, Dreen. Oh, look here, Mr Cope. I, I couldn't kick you out of your bed. Dreen's father sleeps down here. I've got a bit of trouble with my chest. He means he hasn't got the breath to manage the stairs. Is that true, Dad? It's only a bit of congestion. Bit of congestion? It's pneumoconiosis and it's polishing him off. Why don't you say it and I've done? Yes, but Dr Roberts said it, it wouldn't get any worse. You should have let me know. Oh, you'd be too busy painting your queer pictures and gallivanting off with your boyfriends. What's that they call you again, Mr Solomon? Tutor, is it? Uh, senior tutor, yes. Hmm. Does that mean... Do you look after her moral welfare? Well, uh, indirectly. But what does that mean? Either you do or you don't. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> well, 
I try to see that all my students keep, well, out of harm's way. Bit of a girl on her own in London. Well, you weren't born yesterday, Mr Solomon. Have you got children of your own? Yes, I, I've got four. Yes, and some of them will be as old as Drain. Yes, one of them is. So you'll know what I'm on about. She wants looking after. I'm 19. What is this, the Stone Age? Because there's some scandalous goings on, Mr Solomon. She once brought a black fella here. Well, you know, I've got nothing against them. But he wasn't just black. He was as black as that bloody coal. Aunt Astor. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have sworn. Sworn? I don't care if you swear till your great stupid ass drops off. By the raw strain. Now listen, Doreen. Few things are sacred, but, but home and family is one of them. Nice talk in front of strangers. Nice talk? Who's the one who's spouting colour prejudice? Don't we have a bit of peace for once? I've got nothing against the black. David's a Jew, if you hadn't noticed. I suppose you got your knife in them too. What do I care what his religion is? It is mother son like the rest of us, ain't it? Oh, stop it! I don't want any politics here. Well, somebody had to put her right. I can't endure that kind of talk. Oh, yes, 19, I know it all. Mm, I'll get that room ready. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I should let the darkies fight their own battles. They will, you know, before you're much older. I wish they'd hurry up. Is this what you teach them? Well, we teach them to open their eyes and see what's there. After that, it's up to them. I suppose you think we go around with ours glued together? Oh. You do, Dad. Or perhaps we're better off. You lot with your eyes wide open don't like out you see. I like plenty. Look at forest. It's marvellous. Forest? We drove in past the forest. All the young trees growing. Grass covering the slag heaps. Oh, that. They look like mountains. Who on earth dared do this, I thought. Hey, it's wonderful. And now of all times. Planting a forest when all the rest of the world's busy blowing itself to bits. Aye, but what about rats? What rats? Rats and mice. Some folks reckon we're going to be overrun. It's all right, it's summer when they can forage for themselves in forests, but... What about winter when they come into thousands looking for food? Let them come. Let the lions and tigers come. There'll be rabbits soon. <laughs> There's rabbits already. And moles. Honestly, there could be deer. Picture the scene. There could be deer browsing in the middle of Anley in our lifetime. Dear. What's it like to go through there? What do you see? <laughs> Don't ask me. I've never been. You've never been? I spent a lifetime working underneath it. You see, Mr Solomon... They built it on top of the old coal workings. <laughs> I've had a... <coughs> a person full Dad, are you all right? Can I get you a glass of water, Mr Cove? <coughs> it's... <coughs> it's only dust. You know, they, they measure you for dust as if it were gold dust. <coughs> I'm a dust millionaire. <coughs> now, cup of tea. How about a cup of tea? Yes, I'll make you one. No, you won't. I'll get it. I'm not incapable. Don't be a clot. Shut your rattle. Now. You're not getting those crocs out of the china cabinet, Where's Dad. Where's that key? It's not every day we have visitors from London. What has she done with that key? <laughs> they only come out for Christmas and funerals. Don't you show yourself up, just behave. Can't find a plumbing key. Key to the cabinet? Oh, it don't matter. I, I say, that's a, that's a lovely collection of china in there. Do you mind if I take a look? Ah, it'll do. Gee, heavenly host, that teapot. Now, what do you think to it? Well, it's uh, certainly <laughs> unusual. Hey, <laughs> Josiah Wedgwood. Really? You could have fooled me. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? Uh, it, it looks like a sort of cauliflower. Wedgwood made that with his own hands. I thought all his work had a classical turn. Ah, this was very early in his career, before oh. he got airs and graces. Well, it's no use. I can't open it without a key. Oh, go on, Dad. We don't want fancy cups. Aye. Do you like your tea strong, Mr Solomon? Nice and strong, yes. Of course you do. Isn't it incredible, that teapot? Is it really Wedgwood? So rumour has it. <laughs> Even Homer nods. There's a big family feud going on over that. Over that? Yeah, since before I was born. <sighs> my dad's got a brother, Uncle Edgar. He says his father promised him the teapot when he died. Only Grandad died first, and Grandma wouldn't give it up. Then when Grandma died, Uncle Edgar was off in the army. It was during the war. And when she was dying, she said she wanted my dad to have it. <laughs> That's what I love about family life. To hell with harmony, let's start a good row. Uh, 
Listen, darling. Yeah? I won't be able to stay long. What? I can't stay here. Of course you can. You've got to. No, no, no. You've got to talk to Father. You can't run away. No, it's not that. Pardon? It's that room. Room? I'm sorry. I'd better book into a hotel. Father's room? I don't understand. Do you, do you mean because... I of... had a weak lung when I was a boy. When you were a boy? But surely it isn't infectious pneumoconiosis. You can't afford to take risks. Christ, you'd better rub some Vic on your chest, hadn't you? Now, don't take it personally. Can I help my feeble constitution? You can't possibly mean that. It don't make sense. You're just running away from the issue, aren't you? You just haven't got the guts to tell him. Look, I'm not even sure myself, Doreen. Oh, God, why are all men fools and moral cowards? You know, it's laughable. A good, disinterested man, that's what I took you for. You'd listen and you could be convinced. I used to feel a moral scruff compared with you. Oh, open your eyes, I'm only human. No, go back to Sadie. Oh. She'll smother you with cod liver oil and put a mustard poultice on your little chest. She'll fumigate your underwear. You're not God's gift, you know. You've got more wrinkles than half a pound of tripe. Go back to your sanitised ghetto. Go to Sadie. Yes, I think I will. Go on, then. Listen. Oh, listen. Can't we sleep on this? Just go, David. Say your good nights and go. Well, where? Where? Is, is there some hotel? The Grand. Just down the road in town. You'll come and see me tomorrow? Right, here we are. Tea up. <clears throat> ah. Uh, some of them Jaffa cakes. Uh, you haven't seen these cups, have you, Doreen? Uh, I'm sorry, Dad, what? We've got these new cups and saucers. Look. I don't know what they're made of, but if you drop them, they bounce. Pardon? They don't break, they just bounce. Oh, Dad, Dad you've not got... Doreen! Doreen, come on, quick, have a look at this. What's the matter? They've set it afire. It's all on fire. What? The forest. Come and have a look. It's all in flames. You can see it out of the bedroom window. Smoke going right up to the sky. 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, Edgar? 86, cut off, I'm counting money, 87, 88, 89, 90. You shouldn't put all that money on the table, Edgar. What if someone were to walk in? 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Well, they're not first, won't they? Has he only gone out? Oh, he went down the forest to see what damage the fire did. Did he get a bit of breakfast? Aye. Uh, oh, mm. tea's in the pot. You're up early. We're not all ladies of leisure. All oh, them pound notes. You'll have somebody breaking in if it gets known. I should put it away now if you've counted it. I've counted it four times. Anybody passing could look in through that window, you And know. it doesn't add up. Well, don't look at me. What have you done with it, that's all? Oh. That's it, is it? I'm a thief, am I? As far as I can see, you all us were a thief. Only now my eyes have been opened. And soon it'll be in paper for everybody to read. There's £510 here. £85 short. Now, what did it do? Flap its wings and fly out at window? Yes, of course it did. I should have remembered. What? It started crawling out from under the lino, Edgar. I thought, that's funny. That money's got wings. Oh. That's never right. Started flying down the road. Only some of it was walking. It had got legs. And some came jumping out of the coal place, out of the keel. Oh, none of that. But none of that. Thought, oh, there's nothing funny about that. It's not ordinary money. It's Edgar Cope's money. It's not for spending like... Shut up. Shut your rotten face. Don't try and get sarcastic with me. Edgar, you'd make a saint sarcastic. Don't try and dodge out of it. Hush. I think it's our Ernie coming in. Eh? Get this money off the table. Oh, for two pins I'd tell him. I'd tell all the bloody world. Hello, ma'am. How uh, do you sleep well? <laughs> Did you have a good look round? Ah, it's a lovely morning. It's quite hot. Look at the sun. <laughs> you should come down there with me. Have a walk round the forest. Climb the mountain. Mountain? It's a blasted slaggy. Oh, not now it isn't. It's grass, trees. 
if they give it a chance. Was there much damage in in the fire? No, it's blackened the grass a bit. A few of the young saplings, I suppose, won't grow again. Oh, they want locking up. Oh, I don't know. Possibly a cigarette. Cigarette? Yeah, it's all that's going to fire. Them kids won't let trees grow. It's against the bloody principles. Mm. Uh, are you fit, Dad? Eh? What for? Get this organ out and see what's wrong. See if we can make sweet music. Oh, leave the bugger. Nobody plays. Any plays? I'll have to move your trinkets, Mum. Oh, be careful. Here, pass them to me. And photographs. But be careful. Some of them are valuable. Right, Dad. Now, if we drag it round... I will watch that carpet, then. Uh, ju- just pull it back. I'll lift you pull the carpet out from under. All right. Come on. Out. Out, I said. Ah, oh, that's got it. Here. Out of the way, woman. I'm sorry. Come in nicely. Now, let me roll this carpet back. Oh, no. nice. He's on it back once in a blue moon and upsets the old damned house. Right, Dad. Round your end. Right. I'll tell you what. Talk about grass on that sluggy. Right. Out of it. Right, I've got it. There's more grass growing on that bottle of Nook Weatherby's than on that sluggy. OK. Ah, have a breather. How about having a climb up there? Oh, me? A slaggy. Uh, Marvellous views. You can see all over. I'll take you up, ma'am. Dad hasn't got the legs. Oh, who hasn't? Not with his burst hemorrhoid, Ernie. Burst? Oh. Listen, I could do it if I wanted. Oh, we could have a picnic. Take a few bottles of beer. I'd never get up there with my knee. It's all puffed up. You could hang on to me. We could take a deck chair. OK, all right. Shall we open her up? See if we've got mice in the works. No mice in this house. You'll have to take the back off. No, it's all right. Let's just have a poke around. Well, I hope you know what you're poking at. Ah, there's something down here. Something at the back of this bar. It's never a mouse. No, I think it's a rat. Oh, it isn't any, is it? No, it's a dead dog. Oh. Stop acting the oil can. I'll let somebody else do the job. Hang on. I've got it. Here, Dad. All right, give it here, then. What is it, Edgar? Oh, what's up? You're blind. It's a five-pound note, isn't it? Eh? A five-pound uh, note? Here's some more. Aye. Oh, we'll, we'll take them off, then. Oh, <coughs> yes. <coughs> There's a fortune down here. Yes. Eighty-five pound. Isn't there, Edgar? Drain? Is that you, Drain? All right, Dad. It's only me. They say it's the hottest May day for 77 years. Uh, are you on your own? Where's Mr... Uh, uh, your friend? Hasn't he come with you? No. He said he thought he'd drive home today. Hmm? Soon had his fill. He sent his apologies. Oh, I say, you've got the Wedgwood teapot out. Hello, pot. Have they let you out? He admired that pot. Still, if you ain't coming... I got some beer. Went up to the out door. Asta went out got some nice boiled ham and all. Asta'll take a dislike to him, that's twice now. Sorry, Dad. She put a lovely dinner on the table. Changed his mind. Oh, do you know who I saw? No. I saw Ernie. Oh, Ernie? Down in Forest. <laughs> this morning? On my way to Grand Hotel. Bald as a billiard ball. <laughs> What's he doing back home? He said Aunt Anita went too grand. <coughs> said he'd pop up and fill us in with details. When? Today, I think. Good lad. Your friend got in all right at Grand, did he? David, yes. Must have money to burn. Asta were a bit sneaked about that and all. He just thought he were in the way. She'd made up bed, you see. I know. Dad. Aye? I've been thinking of... Uh, David and me, we've, we've been thinking of getting married. You knew, didn't you? I mean, that there was something. You're still wet behind tears. Well, if that's the level you want to take it on, end of subject. Married? I thought he was married. He's got four kids. Yes, it hadn't escaped me, father. I don't come that tone of voice with me. I don't know. It's all bloody collapsing everywhere you look. It might be off. I beg your pardon. We've just had a row. He's going. It might be off. Might be on, might be off. Excuse me, but does he ever make his mind up? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, why bother my head with it? If it might be on, I might be off. I'll be Jed next year. You can marry a blacky man for all I care. I thought you'd better know the truth. 
I wanted you to get to know him. He's years older than you. He's, he's getting on for 50. He's 46. Well, what about his wife? He's been living apart from his wife for over a year now. He's been living with me. Uh, what are you doing? Only this. Oh, Dad! That's what I think of that. Really? And here's what I think. By the roast. Now, I've seen it all. Hit your father, would you? Keep away from me. Dad, I'm warning you. Bloody swing for you. I'll, I'll throw this teapot if you don't keep away. That's our teapot, you. Yeah. Right! Oh. Teapot! Josiah went for a teapot! I'll sweep it oh. up. Have we got a dustpan? Teapot! Made it with his own hands, Josiah Wedgwood. Mind out of the way, Dad. Let me sweep these bits Get up. off. Leave it alone. I'll glue them together. Yes, that'll look very original. Come on, out my way. Oh, teapot. That's all your age knows. Violence. Who was violent first? Got an answer for everything, yes. They'd argue with God. Just because you're old, it don't mean you're a repository of all wisdom. It what? I don't have to take being bashed around. I don't know what's happening. The world's going mad. A man dying and his own children smack his face. Stop whining. You're not all that ill. God's sake, it doesn't stop you going up to that pub if you feel so inclined. Oh. Way off to. I'm going to bed. Why oh, can't we be like they were? Perfect in every way. Hello. Can I come in? Oh, Ernie. Hello. Spring cleaning. Oh, leave it open, Ernie. It's sweltering. Uh. Come and sit down. I'll just take this out. Sounds as like if you've had an accident. Yeah. You know what's in here? No. Your Uncle Harris's world. Broken in fragments or so he thinks. Won't be a minute. Ernie, have you had out to eat? What? Would you like some lunch? Oh, I wouldn't say no if there's anything going. Are you, uh, you sure I'm not in the way? Observe. One spare place. Oh, laid for three. Well, a man short. Oh. My boyfriend. Ah. Who regrets he won't be dining today. This is nice. Yes, Aunt Asta came in and got it ready. She'll strangle my boyfriend. I'll just give Father a shout. Father! Dad! Ernie's here! Ernie's here and we're going to start lunch. Don't crack on, you can't hear. All right, mad ass. Anything wrong? Oh, just the usual corp state of war. Tuck in, Ernie. Uh. As a matter of fact, open that beer, Ernie. As a matter of fact, he slapped my face. Yes, I can see the marks. And then I slapped his. You slapped his? And then I threw the... Hey, Ernie, swear you won't tell. Ernie, you know what were in that dustbin? No. Promise you won't tell your father. My father? I threw the Wedgwood teapot at him. The Wedgwood teapot? In about hundred pieces. Oh, no, I won't tell father. Oh, Lord, Ernie, what will your dad say? He'll have a bobby on you. This'll make things even worse between them. Mm, who knows? Oh, perhaps you've broken the evil spell. What? You mean it could have been a sort of horrible incubus? Well, it was an object of somewhat vile aspect, wasn't it? <laughs> Old Josiah's curse on the coat. Oh, I wish they'd kiss and make up, Ernie. Mm. It's always a popular notion among potters and colliers. Yes. I can feel them when I'm in London, glowering at each other, like that big threatening glow in the sky over Shelton Steelworks. No, I'd just like to get them together face to face. What made you throw it? Well, I mean, apart from aesthetic considerations. I'm going to marry a man of 46. Oh, congratulations. He's married already. Well, these things can be sorted out. Got four children. Oh, uh, yes, life's full of complications. I should have just gone ahead and done it. Every generation thinks it's the guardian of the last bit of decency and they're seeing it disappear. It's even worse here. It's a little pocket set apart like some Stone Age settlement. The permissive society hunt it down. Is that so terrible? Oh, God, Ernie, come on. OK, let's change the subject. 
I've got enough of that every day. With your boys? The boys and the parents. I spend my days defending you both from each other. I like to slip away quietly and listen to bark. Oh, sure, that's going to solve everything. As a matter of fact, I'm exactly like Blaise Pascal, only I get browned off very easily. But don't do that. What? Dodge everything with that evasive jokiness. I can't endure that. Yes, there's a lot of it in circulation. You're a boring old fart, Ernie. I'll give Father another shout. Dad! We've nearly finished. Ernie's drinking all your beer. That'll bring him down. You've always got on well with me, Dad, haven't you? Yes. Yes, he was always in and out of our house during the war. What for? Oh, see, Mother was all right. Shoveling the coal for her, things like that. He lets us have free coal, concessionary coal. Ernie, was there something going on? What do you mean? Auntie Nita and Dad. While your father was away. Going on? Didn't you notice anything? Look, I, I was only seven when the war ended. Well, what, what do you mean? He'd come round when the air aid siren went, see if we were all right. Do you mean at night, when she were alone? Well, they went off in the daylight as well. Must have been a funny time. Ah, all that free coal. I think it nearly killed me, Father, to give up that free coal. Did Dad keep sending it? Ah, father just left it lying there, lying on the pavement. Just because of an old teapot? There must have been more to it than that. Oh, go on, you get worse for keeping. <coughs> You're all right, Ernie. Fine, Uncle Loris. How are you? Come on, Dad. Get stuck in. for finished ours. I couldn't eat a bite. I can stick in my gullet. Thick boiled ham with fat round the edges and mustard. I'm not hungry. Well, don't think I'm going to coax you. I'm not, Auntie Asta. You could say that again. Glass of beer, Uncle. Aye. Aye, I might as well. Well, if you're not going to eat anything, why don't you two go out in the garden while I clear up? Aye, might as well. <coughs> Come on, Ernie. Aye. Bring that bottle with you. You're going to talk to her, Ernie. It's like shoveling smoke. She won't listen to you, she won't listen to me, she won't listen to Asta. I only wish her mother was here to talk to her. You can see the mountain from here. Oh, are you another one? Mountain? It's just a flaming slag heap with a green tea cosy on. The only time that were ever a mountain to me was when I were building it. Then it felt like a mountain. Yes, it's your mountain, really. Well, I put it there. Me and a few thousand other mugs. Yeah. Subtropical forest. You what? I was just thinking. Millions of years ago, and this must have been a huge subtropical forest stretching as far as the eye could see. And then the trees come down. Earthquakes, glaciers, some great catastrophe. Anyway, the trees come down. They're buried in the earth for millions of years and they turn to coal. And where the trees stood, there are green hills and valleys with men farming. And then somebody stumbles on the idea that you can make pots out of the soft yellow stuff just under the surface. And somebody finds that you can bake them in a fire and you can keep a fire going with the black glittery stuff buried deeper in the valleys. So they send men down to bring it up. And with all the waste material, they build up new hills. Yes, and then somebody has the bright idea of covering them with soil and grass. Oh, the deer creep out. I'm planting trees on them, starting the forest off all over again. And then, in a few million years, there's a huge forest stretching as far as the eye can Whoa, see. Oh, there. That's enough. We don't want the flaming trees falling down again and turning to coal. We'll be sending some poor mugs down to dig it up again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you washed them crocs? How do you like that? Down to earth with a bang. Trust a pottery's man to narrow the big eternal questions down to the one cardinal point. You take me for a fool, don't you? Yeah. I've put your ham on sandwiches. Oh, yes, you do. Never mind sandwiches. <laughs> do you put mustard on? Aye, oh, plenty. Well, just put them down there. You know it all, and the rest of us are ignorant, aren't we? Well, I know what that forest's for. Don't kid yourself about that one. It's a lung, isn't it? Trees, forests, they make the air sweet, don't they? This place has always been famous for its smoke. Now they want to make a climate fit for people to breathe. 
Well, good luck to them. Only I'll tell you one thing. They've built it on top of a few thousand dead bodies. There's been a few lungs collapsed to make that one big lung. <clears throat> By the roast! When you say plenty of mustard, you mean plenty, don't you? Pass that beer, Ernie. I'm on fire here. There we are. And, uh... Aye, that's my mountain. I built it. It's a pity you'll never climb it. You know, I heard a skylark on top this morning. I never thought I'd hear a skylark in the middle of Hanley. Yeah, what do you mean, I'll never climb it? I could go up it like a powder all sprint. Oh, yes, one time a day. Are you a betting man? I wouldn't take your money. I'll give you five to one. Go on, take it. You can't climb upstairs half the time. Listen, I don't want your money. I'm going up that slag... That flaming man. No, I don't. I was only pulling your leg. Listen, I was underneath it 50 years. I could have one day on top. I'll get up there, even if they have to wind me down in a cold tub. Well, I was thinking of going up again tomorrow, taking a few beers. Right. You've got a booze in, mate. Right. Doreen, do you think you could make it? I'll have to, won't I? See the last rites administered. Listen, there's a lot of folk round here who'll get the last rites afore me. How's your mother, Ernie? Well, not ready for the last rites. No, no, I didn't mean it that way, lad. Only Asta was saying she hadn't been very clever. Uh, no, it's, um... Well, something's happened. Oh? What's that, then? She's going to be prosecuted for shoplifting. No. She's what? Yes. What on earth did she want to get caught for? Caught? She didn't do it. She didn't do it, did she, Ernie? Well, she says she did. But why? What for? Well, she won't say. She just says she did it, and that's that. She don't know what she's talking about. They trick women like my Aunt Nita. They get them all fuddled. She should have been more careful. You know, your Auntie Ruth once said... What? Something about your mother landing in cart if she wasn't more careful. Wasn't more careful? You mean that... Well, just hold on a minute, lad. Yes, you, your mother had been to this shop, yeah. and she'd seen so much she fancied, and, and she hadn't got any money to pay for it. That would have... Well, what, what? And then, then she... Hang on. It, it, it's all mixed up now. Ooh, this is going back a few years. And uh, there was some woman mixed up in it. Got her out of it, a, a friend of your mother's. Now then, who was that woman? Yes, I was only talking about it the other day. It was one of them Garside girls. Garside? Aye, married Norman Proctor. Him as used to drive Brown's number 12 sausage fan. Mary Garside, that's who it was. Aye, aye, yeah, yeah. Well, well, what happened? Hey, I don't know. Me head's going round. Just give us a hand to get up, Ernie, will you? Aye, uh, you all right? I'll, I'll just go and lie down a bit. Look after her, won't you? Yes, sir. Cheerio, Uncle. You know, her cupboards, her cupboards and drawers, they're, they're always crammed with bargains she's picked up at the sales. Enough stuff to last a lifetime. I know. She starts her Christmas shopping in January. Soap, boxes of chocolate, shirt, shoes. The drawers are jammed tight. Makes you wonder. Don't be stupid. No? Don't you start convicting her. No. I should go home now, see how she is. Yes. Give her me love. Ah, well, thanks for the lunch. Lovely. <laughs> Smashing to see you, Ernie. <laughs> what a flaming shambles. Remind him about tomorrow. Should we say about one o'clock? What? Up the mountain. Give him a push. Some ups. My dad'll be there. You what? I'm getting father and mother up there. You what? Heaven's sake, don't tell him. Cheerio, then. Cheerio, Ernie. You must be joking. Come on, man. Look, we're nearly at the top. Hey, I wouldn't have come if I'd known it was this high. Uh, only a few oh, more yards. Oh. Hey, wait. Let me get me breath. Uh. Ooh. Isn't it boiling, Ernie? Oh, just stop. And let your father catch up. I don't know why I had to bring that big overcoat. Lovely day like this. Are you okay, Dad? I'm all right. Do you want to hand with the deck chair? Yeah. Uh, near my deck chair. 
Just keep hold of that bag of ale. <laughs> keep hold of that bag of ale. <laughs> and mind keep hold of your mother. Is that bag pulling on you, Ernie? Yeah, it weighs a bit Ooh. more than it did down below. Stop shaking that bag, you bloody clown. There's a bottle of cutty sark in there. Is there? He always takes his overcoat on the beach at Blackpool. Everybody looks at him. Blazing hot days and his cap. What about a cap? All right, Dad, give me that overcoat. We're nearly there. Yeah, you're going to carry the overcoat and the beard and your mother talks, hence. Go on, forward, Marge. Aye, well, watch your cap. Doesn't blow off, Edgar. Blow off? What we? No wind? They comes a puff every so often. Oh, get going. <sighs> oh, well, oh. What a beautiful panorama. Oh, hey, there's a bench for sitting on. Ah, nobody here. Well, what do you expect? A football crowd? Talk sense. Ah, what do you think of the view? Ah, ah it'll do. It will, lad. In Northwood Church. Hey. Over there. What's up? Are you blind? It's a beautiful panorama. Oh. In the sky, a lovely blue, eh? Ah. Stoke football ground. You see the pylons? I, is that St Luke's Church? Six, seven, eight. Eight churches, I can see. Oh. Ah. Now, where, where do you want this deck chair? Oh, anywhere. Just put it down. Right. Oh, this grass. Oh. <laughs> it's quite neat, isn't it? I thought it'd be all dirty. Oh, no, damn thing. And they made a smart job of it, Ernie, eh? Uh -huh. What did you expect? Knee deep in slack? Well, I didn't think it'd be so clean. Haven't they done it nice, Ernie? Aren't they some clever men, eh? Oh, a bloody daft chair. Uh, shall I give you a hand with it? Just keep your paws off. I can do it. Uh, I just folded it the wrong way. Oh, there you are. Uh, now, right. I'm going to sit down and sunbathe. You two can get on with it. Uh, uh, get that it out, Ernie. Spread it on ground, then you can sit down. Yeah, and you know what you'll get. I'm sitting on that bench. Never mind your father. He's got a burst hemorrhoid. Oh, get that beer up and then get on with it. Hey, there's a bloke coming up here. Yeah, well, it's a public slag heap. Oh, what are these? Oat cakes? Bacon and cheese and oat cakes. Hey, open beer first. Duck hammer strice old bones me. Bloody denim suit and hair down to his shoulders. Well, it's the fashion. Yeah, he looks old enough to have more sense. You're all for Hey, come on. Come on, get one of these oat cakes. Ah, what do you want to try, Dad? Pass or home brew? Uh, get one of these oat cakes, Hector. Uh, give us some home brew. That's beer and bread and all. Hey, Luke. He's here. Good afternoon. Oh, afternoon. afternoon. Lovely afternoon. Lovely now. Grand. Hey, lovely head on that beer, Edgar. Uh, hey, yeah, ma'am. Oh, thanks. Oh, lovely head. Dad? Oh, right. I've got it. Uh, he's, uh, he's waiting for somebody. Who's waiting for somebody? Oh, Billy. Move that overcoat, Edgar, so he right. can sit on the bench. Oh. Would you like a seat? I'm sorry? Room on the bench. Rest your feet. Oh, no, no, thanks. Thank you. It, you're welcome. Oh, I, I wonder... Pardon? Excuse me, but I, I wonder if you've um, seen a young woman. Up up here, I mean. No, Duck. We, ha we haven't seen nobody. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I'll, um, I'll, go, I'll go and look out for her. Funny place to meet a young woman, top of a bloody slaggy. Shh. Get another oat cake, Ernie. I won't say no. And when are you going to bring a young woman home? I'll surprise you all one day. I should bloody hope so. Hey, hey ask him if he'd like something to eat, Edgar. Who, oh, that bloke? Well, perhaps he'd like a drink. Go on, must be parched. I say, uh, mister. Yes? Just want some snapping. Yes, yes, wonderful views. Oh, we don't understand you, Edgar. Well, what's up? Is he puddled? Oh. Excuse me, young man. Yes. Would you like a piece? Uh, I'm sorry. I I didn't I didn't. Would you like a, a bite to eat, a drink? Oh, mm. oh, that's that's very kind. But well, I I, I couldn't take your. Oh, well, there's plenty for everybody. Ah, sit down there. Uh, pour him a glass of ale, lady. Ah, now, now, what do you like? Uh, chicken sandwiches. Uh, would you rather have an oat cake? Oh, well, I, 
I think I'll try an oak cake. Well, help yourself. <laughs> I'm still fast in this deck chair. <laughs> well, it's it's most awfully kind of you. Uh, beer? Oh, thanks. Uh, got it? Yep, thanks. Yep. Mm. Ooh, this is... Mm, this is delicious. <laughs> I've, I've never tried oak cake before. <laughs> Did you hear that, Nate? <laughs> never had an oak cake. <laughs> How's the ale? Oh, good. Very good. Brewed it myself. Did you? Well, it's... It's very full-bodied and, and tangy. It's very... Uh, I say it's a bit cloudy. It's what? Uh, the beer, a bit cloudy. Well, what do you expect for nout? Thunder and lightning? Oh, no, really. It tastes good. Uh, would you like another oat cake? Well, thanks very much. <laughs> um, a young woman, did you say you were expecting? Well, uh, only half expecting. She wasn't at home and one of the neighbours said she'd heard her say something about, about coming up here. You're not from round these parts, are you? No, no, I live in London. Oh, oh we've got a niece in London, haven't we, Edgar? I wonder if you'd know her. Of course he doesn't bloody know her, dog sense. You know, it, it's a magnificent place you're, you're making here. Yes, it's a beautiful panorama. Mm, runs north for about five miles. One long belt of forest, eventually. <sighs> as long as it isn't just a cosmetic job. <laughs> ah, I... Do you think I could try another oak cake? Uh, you were hungry, weren't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I eating all your food? No, no, carry on. You see, actually, I did a, a very foolish thing. Oh, what was that? Well, last night I drove back to London uh, and I've had nothing to eat since. From here, you mean? Yes, I started out after midnight. I put away a few drinks as well. Stupid thing to do. When I got to Hendon, I parked in a lay-by. And I woke up about eight this morning with a thumping headache and, and drove straight back. Well, what did you do that for? Oh, just wanted to get back, that's all. The state to go. <laughs> what will your wife think? I, I don't live with my wife. Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't mean to be nosy. No, feel free. I'm eating your oak case. Oh. Ah, 30 <laughs> pence a dozen. You've had 10 pence already. Oh, look. Oh, I, I don't mind reimbursing you. Edgar, don't be so mean. <laughs> you want black hair and an oak nose. <laughs> don't you think so, Mr... <laughs> I don't know your name. Solomon. Oh. David Solomon. Oh. Uh, we're named Cope. Uh, this is my husband, Edgar, oh. and uh, this is my son, Ernie. <laughs> Cope? Oh, well, how do you do? I've uh, gone a grumble, apart from this bust hemorrhoid. Well, 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 look at this, Trace. We've got company. What do you say, Grey? Oh. Oh, folks, Alton must have dropped him off. Bloody shadow bank party. Hello, Grandma. How's it going, then? Oh. You can switch that row off if you're staying here. Did you hear that, Trace? Yeah. Well, switch it off, then. That's better. Don't you appreciate music, Grandad? I can do without that. That's real soul music, that is, isn't it, Trace? Yeah, animal. That's real body music. What's what's that you're holding? Is that a young tree you've uprooted? You are. He said, have you uprooted that sapling? Hey, they can talk, Trace. Yeah. Lying down on that blanket, I thought they both freaked out on acid. <laughs> Why did you uproot that sapling? Don't you bother your little bald head about it, Gladys. Listen, you talk to me like that, my lad, and I'll stick one on you. Well, with stamp inches. Oh, don't talk to a Ernie. They're full of their old book. Here, look at all this booze. What's your fancy, Trace? Could you fancy a beer? Don't mind. This young lady says she fancies a beer, Grandad. I'm a bit dry myself. You can gasp. Go on, clear off. We can do without your sort. People come to the countryside for a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> the countryside! Did you hear that, Trace? Yeah. <laughs> Countryside. <laughs> All right, on your way. You've had your fun. And leave those trees alone. Hey, No, no, I don't think you understand. This is a friendly approach. What I propose to say is this. You give us a drink and we'll give you one. Fair exchange, right? Get that bottle out of your bag, Trace. Yeah, yeah. There. That's it. Now you can have a swig of this and we'll have a swig of yours. <laughs> I don't want any of your pop. Pop? Grandma thinks it's a bottle of pop. Yeah. Have you never seen myths before, Grandma? Myths? Here you want locking up the pair of you. Hey, hey, and you get away from the back of my chair. I'm just putting uh, it straight for oh, you. One oh. of these legs is standing on a brick. No, no, no. Get, get, get him away from the, the, the back, back of this chair. Relax, I'm only putting your chair straight. Uh, there, that's it. Oh, Timber! <laughs> Hey, come on, Come back here. Come back here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on now. Come on now. Sit up. Sit up. Oh, come on. Let me back. Uh, uh, pull the chair right 
from him to me and not me. Oh. Flat on me back. Ah, uh, well, uh, oh. I have a drop of whiskey. Oh. Show me all right. Good oh. Lord, what a dreadful shot. Are you, are you in pain no, anywhere? No, no, the back of my head. Here, let, let me look. Oh, oh, oh my, my head, it, the ground was such a bump. Oh, dear. I, I could see spots and stars. Here, have this drop of whiskey. Spots and stars. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Edgar. Oh, my <sighs> word, you've, you've got a bump there to be proud of. <laughs> oh. What makes them do it, eh? What makes them do it? Oh, you's our Ernie. Did you catch him, Ernie? No. Oh. Are, are you okay, oh, love? I've, I've just got this this bump. Oh, I'm all shaking, Ernie. Oh, Lord, that does look nasty. Oh. No, I thought they were going to break the necks. Tearing down, they went. Nearly bowled Doreen over. Doreen? Yeah, she's on her way up. D Doreen? Excuse me, did you say... Hey, get that chair put up, Ernie. Let her sit down. No, are you kidding? I'll never trust one of them chairs again. Now, come on, oh, the yes, safest oh. houses. There you are. Oh, all right. right. But if anybody so much as walks no, behind... No. Oh, it's our Doreen. Hello, Auntie Nita. This is a lovely... Su David. Well, small world, eh? Oh, David, what are you doing here? <sighs> oh, my love. So, I came back. But, but you said you... That's not... I can't stand having you out of my sight. And Sadie, well, she'd hate living on my pity. Listen, she can build something better on her own. Yes, I know. Oh, kiss me. I've been eating your case. Oh, you clock, kiss mm. me. <coughs> is, uh, oh. is that Etruria Gasworks, did you say, Edgar? <laughs> it does look close. It's a beautiful panorama. Ah. Well, Doreen, <coughs> you uh, you made it all right. Oh, hello, Ernie. Uh, have uh, you two met before? I should bloody hope so. Do you uh, do you know everybody, David? Uh, they've very kindly been letting me share their lunch. I, I didn't realise they were your family. My cousin Ernie, Aunt Nita, <laughs> Uncle Edgar, yeah. and this is David Solomon, my... Uh, my... Uh... Your bloody what? That's exactly what I'd like to know. Senior tutor. I beg your pardon? Senior tutor. He's a uh, teacher at college, I expect, yes. Teacher? <laughs> uh, beer, everyone. Teaching her a thing or two, are you? Edgar, it's none of your business what they do. Well, he comes up here, he drinks my beer, he eats my oat cakes, four oat cakes he had, and then he helps himself to my niece. Who does he think he is? King Farouk? Niece? Since when have you ever acted like an uncle to me? Since when have you ever been a brother to my father? As far as I'm concerned, you're just one more slag heap on the landscape. Did you hear that? Who oh, want her? You're dead right. I've got no niece, thank God. Amen. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to screw your neck round. Slowly. Oh, for the love of God. Give me... no, no, Can't what? we get away from family rows, even at the top of a slag heap? Oh, oh, for the oh, love of calm God. Calm down. Hey, and who wants to finish off these last two old okay? Oh, well, not him. He's already had four. Evans. Just look who's coming. Doreen. Doreen. Sure, Aston. Doreen. Oh, oh, thank heavens. Oh, thank heavens, there you are. Aunt Aston, oh. what's up? Well, <laughs> are you all right? <coughs> He's dead. He's dead. You've killed your father. What? You've finished him off. Are you satisfied now? What? Ah, uh, Norris. When did it happen? Where is he, Aunt Aston? Down there. We went in it to the top, and then he stopped and he gave me such a funny look. And, and then he said my name, and he went out, just like a candle. Oh, come on, David. I'm oh, coming I'm... with you. How are you? Climbing up here? Whatever was he dreaming of? Where are any of you dreaming of? What's the big attraction up here? All I know is I've lost the best brother in the world. Well, what happened, Aster? I went in to take him his bit clean washing and a piece of... a piece of sausage. Oh. I met him coming up the street. He'd been getting off somewhere in his condition. And then he, he turned around and said he was coming up here. He was determined, Nita. He said he'd got to see Dreen and you were Ernie up here. The fools egging him on. Well, they've polished him off. He's gone. The best brother I ever had. You weren't fit to lace his boots, Edgar. No, I, I know I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> he was a good lad. What more do you want me to say? 
Well, you've left it a bit late. Hey, they're coming. They're bringing him. Uh, take your cap off, Edgar. That's right. We couldn't just make up. Grown men can't kiss and make up. Well, hey, just look at that. Uh, here we are. Uh, just, just take it steady, Uncle Horace. Will you stop? Uh, Fuss in. Here we are. Uh, uh, let go of me. I can manage on my own. Do what you're told, Dad. I said stop your fussing. Oh, Horace. Well, by the rose. Edgar, what's he doing here? We've just buried thee. Anita, what draw us in head of? Asta said you'd snuffed it. Oh, Horace, let me look at you. I was sure you'd pegged out. Pegged out? I just sat down to get my wind back. You collapsed. I just sat down, I tell you. I was listening for that flaming skylark. Hey, <laughs> never heard a peep. Well, just look at this view from up here. Isn't it a beautiful panorama, Horace? Come and sit down, Dad. Oh, get off. Leave me alone. You can see all over. You can you can see right into Cheshire. <laughs> Come on, Mother. Get backed up. Edgar, what's your hurry? There's not room on one slag heap for him and me. Get that bag packed and we're off. You just stop there, Nita. Oh? And who do you think you're ordering about? I've been to see Mary Proctor this morning. It was somewhat... I remember Ruth saying, years ago, but uh, I couldn't be sure. What's Mary Proctor got to do with us? She used to be a cleaner at Braddock's, just before they opened in the morning. Now, all I could remember was Ruth saying Nita had taken something from Braddock's without paying for it. Years ago, this was. What? She's done it before? Quite, you. Go on, Horace. Well, I didn't forget that part because it sticks in your mind, but there was a bit more to it. Something that made it not as bad as it sounds. And that's what I couldn't remember. Anyway, I knew it was something to do with this Mary Proctor, do you see? So, this morning, I went down Well Street. They used to live in Well Street, Proctor's. Of course it's, uh, it's all knocked down now, you know. They built skyscrapers. Can't, can't you cut it short, Horace? Did you find her? Of course I found her. Had to do a bit of running about, though. Well? Aye, well, uh, she's a lovely woman. She's got a very... Painful carbuncle on the back of her neck. Oh, never mind a carbuncle. What did you say about Nita? Aye, well, uh, she remembered, all right. Remember what, Dad? She remembered Nita pinching her shirt for Ernie. Oh, mm -hmm. I, don't don't believe believe that. That. I wish you'd just mind your own business, Horace. Do you want me to get in more trouble than I am already? I'm trying to bring out the truth. And the truth is, you are not a thief. We've never had a thief in our family. Only the one. <sighs> Oh, let that pass. All right, let me tell it. This particular day, Nita was passing Braddock's and there was a bargain sale going on. So she went inside and she saw this shirt. And she must have fancied it for Ernie, like you do. But she'd only got a few coppers in her purse, do you understand? So she asked the young woman to put the shirt on one side while she went home and got the money. We can't do that, this woman says. Some people go out of their way to be awkward. So, Nita waited till nobody was looking. Now, wait a minute, Horace. Listen, listen, she waited till nobody was looking, and she put the shirt in her shopping bag and walked out. Now, some people might call that theft. But just listen to this. The next morning, before Braddock's opened, Nita went down to the shop and pushed an envelope through letterbox with money for shirt. Only she was spotted. Mary Proctor was there, cleaning the shop, and she spotted Nita pushing the envelope in. And when manager come in, he sent for Mary and he said, Do you know out about this? Uh, money for a shirt? Did you see who dropped it in? And of course, Mary said no. Didn't want to get Nita into any trouble. And that would have been that. Only Nita did it again. Oh, she was. Oh, no. Again. Twice. Must have been, uh, oh, more than a year later. Another bargain sale at Braddock's and Nita without enough money for what she wanted. And same thing happens again. Now, Mary Proctor doesn't like this. It's not wrong exactly, but it's not exactly right. So she went up and saw Neat about it, and she come and told our Ruth as well, so she could lend her weight. Now, that's all in past. But the question is, did the same thing happen this time? Well, Nita? I couldn't help myself, Horace. You hadn't got enough money in your purse? No. And the girl refused to put it to one side till you could call in and settle up? Yeah, yes. 
And it was your intention to put money through letterbox? Yes. Only somebody saw you put it in your bag, and they caught you when you went out at shop, eh? Yeah. Well, didn't you tell them what you intended to do? Who's going to believe a story like that? I should think that's what half people tell them. And if I'd told them what I'd done before, they'd have had me up for that as well. Yeah. Just you listen, Nita. Mary Proctor's willing to put her hand on that Bible and tell court what she knows. And she thinks manager of Braddock's might do the same. Uh, how money came through the door the previous times. He's a good fair chap, she says. What? You, you, said, you think they could let me off light? You could go scot-free if we play our cards, right? We must wait and see. At least we know what's true. Oh, oh, Horace. I... That's all right, lass. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Could you fancy an oatcake? Eh? Hey? Th this too, going begging. Oh, no, no, not just now. <laughs> Mr. Salomon, I, I know you won't say no. Well, I, I don't Oh, I... don't look at me. <laughs> yes, look, we, we haven't started on these sandwiches yet. Auntie Astor, mm. chicken sandwich, glass of beer. Uh, how about you, Doreen? Uh, well, I've left me washing on the line. I, no, I've no time for picnics. What if it comes on to rain? Comes on to rain? We're in the middle of a flaming heat wave. Oh, well, just a little bite, that's all. But I don't want any beer. Well, come on, tuck in. Plenty for everybody. Come on. Here we are. Get some beer off of me. There's plenty more where that came from. Might as well. I've got some beer, anyone. Horace, Hi. could I just have a quiet word? I'll let them get on with you. Hey, just look at that fantastic view. Uh, I still haven't heard that skyline. Well, uh, I'll just say this, Horace. Uh, I appreciate what you've done. Oh, no, 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 it won't say it. You've saved my good name. Have what? When I thought of my name being dragged through the Sentinel, I, I walked down our street and I felt this eye. No, I won't forget, Inori, what you've done for me today. Uh, just let's get something straight. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you what. We've both been a bit hasty. Our time of life, it's stupid falling out. Have you seen the price of coal? Price of coal? What's that got to do with it? You can start sending the free coal again. <coughs> Pardon? <coughs> oh, I said all right, Edgar. I don't mind. It'll get it off your hands. Yes, yes. Plenty of room in your cold place, eh? Ah. Mm -hmm. I still think you robbed me. Hey? Ah, it's a bit of a bugger when a bloke goes off to tackle Rommel, and when he gets back, he finds his own brother's gone and pinched his teapot. It's broke. What? A hundred pieces. Our drain chucked it at me. Hi. Just missed me head. By <laughs> God. <laughs> That's all I wanted it for. Crown thee with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell thee what, she'll give some husband a dance. Yeah, she's making a right mess of it. Still, it's her life. We've been kicked into touch, out of our hands. Uh, Do you ever wonder how things will turn out? Oh, let it come. I suppose they're doing some good things. If they can build a place like this and keep it nice, there's, there's hope for some of us. Uh, it's very good. They made a... Beautiful panorama. Big trees someday. <sighs> we won't live to see it. Now, just look at that lad down there. What lad? Just, just down there by that tree. Now, what'll he be, about uh, 16, 17? By the time he's an old man, it'll be a thick forest. He'll be able to go on safari. That lad? Bloody hell, he's the one. Huh? Hmm? What's he up to? Look, he's setting fire to that tree. Ernie, come here. Setting fire, do you say? Well, what's the trouble then, Dad? Look, look, down there. Setting the place on fire. Mm. It's that kid. Ah, he was emptying some out of a bottle and then he set fire to it. Look, he keeps splashing it all out. Meths. He, he had a bottle of meths. Wow. Meths? Yes. They want lucky oh, no. Oh, no. You know what he's doing? He's trying to light a circle of fire and cut us off. Never. Come on, David. Hey, oh, we're all going oh. to get killed up no, here. No, 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 it'll be OK. We can beat it out with our coats. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? Well, well, what should we do, yeah, David? Get your coat, anything. Uh, the, that bag, anything. You go down that side and I'll go and help Ernie. I'm sorry, on. Eldred. I'll put it out. Edgar, <laughs> hey, where are you going with that overcoat? Put that fire out. What do you think? That's your best over... <coughs> oh, that's his best overcoat. <coughs> Horace, are you all right? It's this smoke. Oh, let's get out of it, love. Come on, here. Let's get away from sight. There's somebody down there helping them, though. Get away. What can you do, your condition? Here. This is better. You can breathe here. Why, hell, 
smoke all outside. He must have set fire to it all the way round. Doris, oh, my hand. You what? Oh, my hand, Doris. Hey, hey, no, mate. Frightened, Doris. Oh, my hand. Oh, all right. Thank you, Doris. <coughs> it's a long time since we held hands. Are we going to be burned? No, no. Four of them on job now. They'll soon, they'll soon put it out. Five of them. Five? Your Asta went with them. Oh, you see, smoke's dying down already. Ah, there's no to it. You don't let go of my hand. I won't let go. Oris, I... here's that boy. Hey. Hello, Grandma. You still here? Not afraid of being roasted? Just you keep your hands off them bags. Who's going to stop me? I'll bloody stop you. Well, well, big hero. Come on then, young fella. Show us what you can do. Stay here, Horace. He'll go for you with that bottle. That's just about his measure. I'll bottle him. Come on then, what are you waiting for? I'll bottle him. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, oh, then. I'll bloody bottle oh, you! Let go, you old fool! You're gonna get hurt! Ow! Get off me! Lay off, man! Let go of my arm! I'll twist it off for you! I'll, I'll break it off! I keep still or I'll break it off! I'll the and club the other ten with you! Now then, what do you do it for, eh? Oh! What do you do it for? Set it, set it fire to it! Because it's bloody useless! What use is it to me? <coughs> People are, are trying to do something for you Ow! to make a beautiful place. Ow! Why don't you give him a chance? L let, let go of him, Horace. He's had his lesson. He can listen to me till I've done. This town is trying to pick itself up out of muck. What do you want? Hey, back to dark ages. What do you want? Chaos! Why do you have to destroy everything? Have you got no bloody heart? Look around you! Open your eyes! Can't you see what they're, what they're trying to do? Can't I shake it into you? Will we never... Will we never knock it into you? They're making a start here. They're, they're making a, they're making a star. Horace! Hey, hey, get up, mister. What's up with him? Oh, I never touched him. Horace? Horace? I never touched him. In Watch the Forest Grow by Ken Whitmore, Horace was played by Geoffrey Banks, Aster Kathleen Helm, Ernie Peter John, and Edgar Ronald Baddeley. Doreen was Annette Robertson, David John McGregor, Nita Paula Tilbrook, the waitress and trace Eileen O'Brien, and the manager and Gray Christopher Martin. The play was directed in Manchester by Alfred Bradley. This evening's Monday play is the fictional account of a Protestant martyr in the reign of Queen Mary, Dr John Rowland. He sticks to his beliefs at a time when others are changing for ethical convenience. Stephen Murray stars as Rowland and Maurice Denham as the local magnate, Sir Thomas Nedbit, in a setting inspired by the writer's own East Anglian place of work and the true life account, in Fox's Book of Martyrs, of a Dr. Roland Taylor. A flock which would follow a Protestant shepherd would be overcome by the staggers from the eating of so much new grass. No, the answer is no. Now, leave me. <laughs> I did not expect on this Sunday to have my sermon privately, because your church has been barred against you. Had I foreseen, I would have locked my own doors. I? I? Barred? You've been locked out of your church. Since when? 
But did you not receive word from the council? I know nothing. You've been dismissed your post. By whose order and on what authority? It's all set out in the communication. What communication? I have received none. A letter bearing the Queen's seal was given to Master Cage to deliver into your hands. Roman by Tom Mallon is tonight at a quarter to eight. Earlier this evening in Serendipity, broadcaster and humorist Con Ryan takes a light-hearted look at the last century when he presents a selection of his favourite recordings from the BBC's sound archives. And it's perhaps not surprising that, sooner or later, the talk turns to the 19th century's attitude towards sex. The Victorians, we like to think, were repressed and inhibited. They had all sorts of Freudian rumblings going on in their subconsciousnesses. They put frilly trousers on their piano legs, lest you should guess at the gender of the Bechstein. But were they really as inhibited as all that? Certainly, a great Victorian artist, Mary Lloyd, the darling of the music halls, was as free as a songbird. She wouldn't have recognised an inhibition if you served it up to her on toast. And I always own with everything if you fancy it. Get on with it. Don't waste no time. And while you young couples spoon, I'll be on my honeymoon. Both a little know what you fancy does be good. That was Mary Lloyd, and you can hear more from the sound archives when Con Ryan goes to the archive auction at 20 to 6 this evening. And following the 6 o'clock news in Share and Share Alike, Leslie Burroughs is beginning to think that his youth is receding as quickly as his hair. That perhaps he might have devoted too much time of his life to mum and spent too little time living. So he goes to his brother Jack, who has great experience with the opposite sex, to ask his advice. Jack convinces him that lost youth doesn't necessarily mean the end to all hopes of tasting the flesh pots, and together they work out a plan for Leslie to meet Vivian, an attractive blonde employed at the factory where both brothers live. Share and share alike is at half past six this evening. Radio 4. Story time. The Old Wives' Tale by Arnold Bennett. Abridged for radio in 15 parts and read by Edward de Souza. The Old Wives' Tale, part 6. After six years of marriage, when they had altogether given up any idea of a family, Constance and Samuel Povey were blessed with a son, whom they called Cyril. When the boy was nine, a certain day arrived that marked a very special event. At breakfast, as Cyril tucked into his meal with his usual appetite, Mr. Povey said, Let me see, it's today you begin to go to school, isn't it? I wish father wouldn't be such a chump, said Cyril to himself. And considering that the commencement of real school had been the chief topic in the house for days, weeks, considering that it now occupied and filled all hearts, Cyril's reflection was excusable. Now, there's one thing you must always remember, my boy, said Mr. Povey, promptness. Never be late either in going to school or in coming home. And in order that you may have no excuse, here's something for you. It was a silver watch and chain. Cyril was staggered. So also was Constance, for Mr. Povey could keep his own counsel. The watch was the unique flowering of Mr. Povey's profound but harsh affection. Routine was ignored that morning. Father did not go back into the shop. At length, the moment came when father put on his hat and overcoat to 
take Cyril, and Cyril's watch and satchel, to the endowed school. A solemn departure, and Cyril could not pretend by his demeanour that it was not. At dinner time, a triumph seemed probable, and at tea time, when Cyril came home under a mortarboard hat, and with a satchel full of new books and a head full of new ideas, the triumph was actually and definitely achieved. He had been put into the third form, and he announced that he should soon be at the top of it. He was enchanted with the life of school, he liked the other boys, and it appeared that the other boys liked him. The parlour table was consecrated to his lessons. It became generally known that Cyril was doing his lessons. His father scanned the new textbooks and contrived to maintain an air of preserving his mental equilibrium, but not his mother. She gave it up, and Cyril passed above her.